Today, I've got an easy snare drum sequencing tip for you. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Jury. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. Alrighty, so today I've got another drum sequencing tip for you. Um, specifically, this one is in regards to the snare drum. Now, I've spoken several times on this channel about uh, kind of guiding your listeners' expectations uh, in terms of where you want them to think the track is going, and then it's up to you, of course, whether you deliver on that uh, or change it or, or whatever. Uh, but controlling what your listener... Uh, is anticipating is a very, very important concept uh, in your music, I think. So if we look at that concept in regards to drums, we can probably um, assume that our listener going into a track is probably going to be expecting a few things already. They're going to be expecting a kick drum, a hi-hat or some sort of cymbal or uh, like shaker or something that's kind of keeping the, uh, you know, the time, the ch 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 eighth notes, 16th notes, something playing over the kick, and then they're probably also going to be expecting a snare drum. Three different elements of the drum kit that are pretty standard across uh, acoustic drumming, electronic drumming, electronic uh, drum sequencing, you know, they're, they're pretty key elements in any drum part. So one way we can keep our listener engaged is by controlling when those elements actually come into the track. Now, the snare drum is very important as it often provides the backbeat, which is a really uh, rooted feeling when you when you hear that snare drum hitting on that big two and four. Boom, ka, boom, ka. And it's a really comforting thing. So today's tip is a very simple one. Don't give them the snare drum immediately. Make them wait for it. Save it. Put it in later in the song. So let's go ahead and uh, play with that. So um, let's start off with just a very basic four on the floor kick drum pattern here. Uh, by the way, I'm demonstrating this on the PO32 Tonic, um, but it'll work with literally any drum machine or drum sequencer or, you know, we're, we're just making a drum pattern here. So any, any drum machine will work. All right, very, very basic, right? Let's add some closed hi-hats in there. Let's put them on the eighth notes, just like this. Now, a typical listener might expect the next thing to be added to be a snare drum. And they're probably expecting it to come in fairly soon after we start the kick and bring in those hi-hats maybe at the same time as the hats. So just simply hold off on giving it to them. So let's copy this pattern into another slot here. And in the second pattern, we'll go ahead and sequence that snare drum on two and four. Listen to the differences between these two patterns. The snare drum definitely adds some power and impact to that pattern, and that can be used to your advantage. Don't just put the snare drum in because that's what a basic drum groove sounds like. Put it in because you want to add power and add some impact to your pattern. Make your listener wait for it. Make them smile with relief when that snare drum finally does come in. Let's uh, change things up, though, a bit. So I'm going to go to an empty pattern. I'm going to immediately go ahead and sequence eighth notes on my hi-hat just so we can stay grounded here. Let's add a kick drum pattern that maybe is asking a bit harder for a snare drum. Maybe something like doom, do doom, 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 do doom, doom, doom. So if we're counting through our steps as one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, I'm gonna put it on one E and duh, the uh of one, two, doom, do doom, the and of two, doom, do doom, doom, the one, the downbeat of beat three, doom, 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 doom. And that's our pattern. Now, if we listen to this, we naturally want to hear a snare drum right here on the downbeat of beat four. But what if we take that off, and what if we don't give it to our listener? Our listener is going to hear this kick drum pattern, and of course, depending on the context of the music that it's uh, playing under, they are going to be wanting that snare drum to come in there. It's 
starts to build anticipation. So once again, let's copy this pattern here into a new slot. And now I will, I'm gonna use this snare drum actually. I will add that in on the downbeat of beat four. Sounds great, right? Use that to your advantage. Make them sit here, make them wait for it. And you can apply this on a smaller scale as well. So let's say uh, we've just got a four bar pattern. While you might be inclined to make the pattern with the snare drum just play four times like this, we can build a lot more tension and deliver a lot more release if we play the pattern without the snare drum three times and then finally give our listener that snare drum on the fourth time. So one, two, three times on the first pattern and then once on the second pattern after those first three have played. Here we go. And you could make that snare drum super, super impactful if you wanted. You could uh, layer it with a different sound. You could add, you know, a bunch of reverb to it. Pah! I'm just gonna add this clap onto that step in that second pattern here on the uh, downbeat of beat four. Let's have another listen. Sounds great. And of course that also invites you to make other slight changes the fourth time through when we add that snare drum on other instruments. So maybe you put an extra note in your bass line. Maybe when that snare drum hits you, uh, pop the note of the bass line up an octave uh, to signify, you know, ooh, a little more, uh, a little more variation is happening this time around. You're finally getting that snare drum. I'm going to show you one more example here. We're going to do more of kind of like a, a faster paced feeling uh, rock pattern, I guess you could say. Uh, so I've got another blank pattern here. This time I'm gonna do 16th notes on my hi-hat. And I'm gonna go up to 140 BPM. Go to our kick drum. The final pattern is gonna be doom do da doom 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 ga doom do da doom 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 ga. But we're not going to give the listener the snare drum at first. So we're gonna put our kick drum on the downbeat of beat one, the uh of beat one. We're then going to put our kick drum on the and of beat two. Doom goo ga goom the downbeat of beat three, and the and of beat three. Now I'm actually going to copy this into another pattern, and we are going to add in our snare drum. There we go, I'll use that as my snare drum sound. I'm gonna put it on the downbeat of beat two and the downbeat of beat four. So now we have two copies of the same pattern, but the second variation of it has the snare drum on the back beats, whereas the first one does not. So first I'm gonna play it with the snare drums. Now we're going to drop those snare drums out by going to the first pattern we sequenced. Remember, this is the same thing, just no snare drums. Doesn't that just feel like it wants to bring in those snare drums? It feels like it wants to go somewhere. In my head even, I can hear a bass line. I can hear something building up for, you know, a good part of the song uh, while we're building this anticipation. When are we gonna bring in that backbeat? Uh, maybe that's for a chorus. Maybe it's for um, like a, a bridge after a chorus or a solo section or whatever. We have a very easy way by adding those snare drums in to add a whole lot of fulfillment basically into our track for the listener and that is an incredibly powerful thing to have at your disposal. Such an easy but effective technique. 
I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay, too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.